Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. Just enjoying a nice Bundaberg diet ginger beer. Very little sugar. So let's talk about B58s. Why is the B58 so strong? And if you think about how it's made, it makes a lot of sense. Let me explain. So with the B series of BMW engines, so the B37, which is the three cylinder diesel, B38, three cylinder petrol, B47, four cylinder diesel, B48, four cylinder petrol. I'm sure you can see the trend here. B57, which is the three liter diesel then there's a B58, which is the three liter petrol. So with all of these Bs, all of the Bs, BMW wanted to make it modular so that they can pretty much save money. So what they did was, was the for the B57 and the B58 specifically that we're gonna be talking about in this video, they share the same block, crankshaft, and connecting rods. The pistons are different from diesel due to the combustion chamber being different. Pistons are different, but the reason why it's so strong is that, so they more or less made the petrol, the, the B58 more or less is as strong as the B57, which is the diesel version. And so because of that, it's got cast aluminum pistons, forged con rods, and a forged steel crankshaft in an aluminium block. So I'm just editing this video and I forgot to mention the fact that the B58 also has a closed deck design. This is much stronger than the predecessor, which is the N55 that had an open deck, which is significantly weaker. Subscribe. And so because of this, this is why it's incredibly strong and more or less very overbuilt for how much power it makes, especially in stock form. So a lot of people are cracking eight, 900 horsepower with a stock unopened B58. Something very important to note is, is that not every B58 is the same. There's the generation one B58s, which was in like the F30 um, and the F20, the M140, which a lot of you didn't get in the States. Um, I know a lot of my audience is from the US and you didn't anyway. I'll pop a photo of it up here in case you don't know what it is. Generation two B58 went from 3000 PSI fuel injectors to 5000 PSI fuel injectors as well as they removed the idler pulley from where the high pressure fuel pump would run on the diesel equivalent. So they changed it a little bit for the petrol version, as well as ah, generation two B58 got the six port exhaust head or exhaust manifold. Generation one had the exhaust manifold built into the cylinder head and it only had two ports. Generation 2 went to the 6 port head, which was on the Toyota Supra. We're now seeing the Generation 3 B58 come out, and there isn't a whole lot of information on it, but the biggest the biggest improvement that I've seen is that it's now got port and direct injection. Port and direct injection. So this will now mean that for cold starts, low load operation, it'll be using the port fuel injectors. And then for high load or full load, whatever you want to call it, it'll be using just the direct injection. Just the direct injection. At least that's what I'm theorizing here because that's normally where each has its benefits. Direct injection is pretty bad. Well, it's not pretty bad. It's not ideal in low load and cold start operation. So that's why they've done it. They've, they've, they've done it for missions. So. Anyway, this will now mean that if you want to put a bigger turbo or flash your Generation 3 B58, you could probably push it even further before you need to upgrade the fuel system. So, summary, B58 was based on a diesel engine, hence why it's so much stronger than every other six-cylinder engine that they've made previously. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to enjoy my Bundaberg Diet Ginger Beer. And subscribe for more. If there's a different engine or a particular car that you would like me to talk about, comment below. I'll probably do it anyway. But yeah, just let me know.